Part of learning about logic is to understand whether a statement is true or false. Now, sometimes we have more elaborate statements, such as those conditional statements. And in order to understand whether they're true or false, we use what's called a truth table. It helps us to take apart each section of that compound statement and go ahead and assign to it a truth value so that we can understand the final outcome, whether that statement is true or if it's false, when is it true and when is it false? So 3.3 is about truth tables. We're working with negation, conjunction, and disjunction. Classifying a statement as true or false is called assigning a truth value to the statement. All right, so basically what you need to understand when it comes to negation is that not P has the opposite truth value of P. Not P has the opposite truth value of P. So if I have my P and I assign to it a truth value, so the first time I'm going to call it true, the second time I'll call it false. So if my P, the original statement, is true, then not P would imply that it is false. If my original statement is false, then not P would call it true. So not P and P have opposite truth values. Let's take a look at conjunction. Conjunction uses the word and, and we know that it has the rooftop symbol to it. They assigned two simple statements. P is I visited London. Q is I visited Paris. And we have four different cases. If P and Q are both true as in case one, then P and Q is true. All right, this is the only time that it'll be true. Any other combination, you will notice that it gives us a false on here. So in other words, if P is true and Q is false, the outcome would be false. If P is false and Q is true, the outcome is still false. If both P and Q are false, then the outcome is false. So the only different one or to remember is that if you're doing the conjunction and P and Q are both true, the outcome is true. Any other combination of P and Q will always give you a false result. The definition of a conjunction. The conjunction is true only when both simple statements are true. And that is the case right here. If P is true and Q is true, the conjunction is true. Next, we're looking at disjunction. The disjunction is false only when both component statements are false. So we're looking for P is false and Q is false. And that's the only time the result will be false. And that would be disjunction. Now, I know this can seem a little overwhelming, but the great thing is, is that you don't have to memorize these. You are allowed to use a formula sheet, which I have located on my math lab, course tools, document sharing. And you will have all the formulas listed for you for this chapter. You just need to know how to fill out your truth table correctly. In reviewing the negation, the statements have the opposite truth value. The conjunction is true only when both are true. Remember, true when both components are true. Otherwise, everything else is false. And for the disjunction, the disjunction is false when both component statements are false. And that means any other scenario would be true. So if you remember the special conditions and cases like which one will cause true and which one causes false, then you have less to memorize. Let's take a look at our first truth table. It says construct a truth table for the negation of P and Q. 
to determine when the statement is true and when the statement is false. So one of the things that we need to do when we're looking at this original statement, and let me rewrite that, we have the negation of P and Q. So remember, we always want to do what's in parentheses first, and we know we need to find P and Q. So I'm going to place that in my column. And then lastly, I need to take the negation of that. So I'm going to do the negation of P and Q. I can barely fit that in, but I'll do that. All right, so the first thing we want to take a look at is when we are dealing with a conjunction, try to remember the special situation where it said that it is going to be true. It said if P and Q are true, then that means the conjunction is true. So therefore, in this case, this will be my true and any other situation will be false. So my special condition is if P and Q are both true, my conjunction is true. Now I'm going to focus solely on this column right here, and I'm going to take the opposite by doing the negation of it. So the negation of true, in other words here, the opposite of true will give me false. The opposite of false is true, and we'll just go from here. So when it says determine the statement is true and when the statement is false, they're asking you to find this column right here. This is your answer column. So we're going to take step by step, take your little statements and break them apart and work them slowly. And then the outcome, the last final column should be your original statement. Complete the truth table for the given statement by filling in the required columns. Now this one's already completed for us, but let's take a look at it. Now for the P column, just so you know, when you're making your own truth table, the P column, what you want to do is start out with two trues and then two falses. And then for the Q column, you alternate starting with true, false, true, and then false. And that's how you start out your truth tables. Half of them true, half of them false with the P column, and then alternating true, false, true, false on the Q column. All right, so when you take a look at your statement here, this says not P and Q. So we already have P and we have Q. So the next item that you want to go find is this not P. And that's why they have the column here for not P. And then once you find your not P, what you want to do is focus on your not P and your Q column to create the answer for the final column. So what I normally do is I put in a, another column right here, usually on my paper. And as I say, I have my not P, so I'm just going to rewrite my Q right here next to it. And I'll go from there. So what we're looking at is on this last column, it says not P and Q. We know we have, again, a conjunction. The conjunction says if the first statement and the second statement are both true, then my final outcome is true. So once again, this is the only scenario right here where they're both true. And since they're both true here, the outcome is true. And that's the only time it will be true. Everything else will be false. And you can see that all these other items turned out to be false. So the final statement would be right here. This is your truth value for that statement. When we say the truth value, you can determine what P and Q need to be in order to come out with a true result or you can see the situations when they will come out with a false result. Construct the truth table for the following statement. Determine when the statement is true and when the statement is false. 
So if we take a look at that, remember we want not P or not Q. Now what has been given to us is just P and Q. So for us to find that statement, I need a not P and I also need a not Q so that I can join them together in my final statement, not P or not Q. All right, so the first thing I'm going to do is look at my P column and find the opposite of it. So the opposite of the P column is going to be false, false, true, true. Next, I'm going to find my not Q by looking at my Q column. So the opposite of Q would be false, true, false, true. Remember the negation is the opposite truth value. And lastly, I'm going to focus on these two last columns that I just created so that I can finish my third column. My third column says this is a disjunction with that V right there. And if you remember on a disjunction, it said that if both statements are false, the answer is false. So if both statements, my not P and my not Q are false, then the outcome is false. And that's the only time it is false. Any other time, it's going to be true. All right, and this is how you complete the truth table for this statement. We are going to create another truth table, only this statement is a little more challenging. So we have parentheses, we have not P, or Q, close parentheses, and not Q. So in looking at what I currently have, I have a P column and a Q column. Remember, we're, I'm focusing on what's inside the parentheses first. So I need a not P column that's inside the parentheses. And then staying inside the parentheses, I'm going to go ahead and do my not P or Q, and that'll complete what's inside the parentheses. And then after that, I still need a not Q. And lastly, we'll have the original statement. And it won't fit in there, but I'm going to write as much as I can. All right, so what I did again is follow what's inside parentheses first. I needed a not P, and with the not P, I can go ahead and find my disjunction, not P or Q. Then outside of the parentheses, I have a not Q that I need. And then I did my original statement on the final column. So once again, to find my not P, I need to focus on P column and do the opposite value. So that will give me false, false, true, true. Next, I need to do not P or Q. So to do the not P or Q, I'm looking at these two columns here. And I have to remember the or, my disjunction. On the or, it said that if both statements are false, which would be right here, if they're both false, the outcome would be false. All right, so if not P is false and Q is false, the outcome would be false. Otherwise, the remaining options will be true. 
All right, and next I'm going to go and write not Q. So focusing on my Q column, I'm going to my not Q. And the opposite of Q is just going to be false, true, false, true. And finally, I'm going to place these two together with a conjunction, my conjunction for that final statement. So the conjunction said, if both statements are true, the outcome is true. And that's the only time it is true. Any other scenario would give you false. And this is how you complete this truth table. We're going to take a look at tautology. Tautology means that the outcome will always be true. So when we evaluate an original statement and that last column ends up being all truths, then we can consider that statement a tautology. In this case, we have P or not P. And so what I need on here would be a not P column and then the original statement, P or not P. All right, so in order to fill out this table, not P is the opposite truth value for the P column. So if P is true, then not P is false. We're just going to do the opposite truth values from the P column. Next, I'm going to take both of these together and we're going to do a disjunction, the V. Remember, this is also the word or. So when I look at these two together, the condition for a disjunction is that if the first statement is false and the second statement is false, the outcome is false. So what I'm doing is I'm looking for false and false. Well, I don't have a false and false. So therefore, I wouldn't have a result that's a false. This will give me nothing but trues. And since they are both trues, this is considered a tautology. So the original statement is a tautology. We have been working with just P and Q statements. In this case here on the truth table, so if we have P, Q, and R, three different variables or three different letters, then we're going to have eight different cases. And you can see the different combinations listed there. So if we wanted to complete this table, you can see that under the P column, we have half of these are true, half of these are false. And then if you look at the Q column, you have two trues, two falses, two trues, two falses. And then on the R column, we alternate truth values. It's true, false, true, false, true, false, all the way down. So we have to wonder why do we have eight cases on there? Well, it's because you have three different variables. So let's take a look at it this way. It's two to the n power is the expression that we're going to be using. If you take two to the second power, the exponent is representing uh, the number of statements you have. So if I only have a P and a Q, then I have two statements. So this is two squared, which gives you four. So that is just when you have P and a Q, two statements. If I have three statements, two to the third power, well, two to the third power is eight. Remember, I have a P, a Q, and an R, so I have three. So that is why you have eight cases listed on this table. If you had two to the fourth power, two times two times two times two, you would end up with 16 different cases. Now we're not gonna get this crazy, but we do have one that has a P, Q, and R, so you definitely wanna practice those. And make sure you know how many cases you need to find for each of your statements.
Determine the truth value for the statement below when P is false, Q is true, and R is false. And so here is your statement. You have not P or parentheses Q and not R. So in our mindset, we know that we have three statements, P, Q, and R. So we're looking at eight different cases, and that would be a very huge truth table to have to go find. Um, the other option is to create the truth table from what we have here. We have P is false, Q is true, and R is false. So can you imagine if you had a truth table, you would need your P column, your Q column, your R column, then you can see over here in your statement, you would need a not P. You'd also need a not R column. You would need to do a Q and not R. And then you would need your final statement. We'll put it like this so you know how to list it. That would be a lot of columns to go find. And what in particular that you're looking for is that P is false, Q is true, and R is false. It's not impossible to do, but you can do it this way. I kind of take a shortcut. And what I do is I take my original statement. So this says not P or parentheses Q and not R. And what I do is I substitute in those values. They just gave us the false and the trues and the false. So I have the negation here. P is a false statement. So I'll put my F right here. They told us Q is true. And they also told us R is false. So I just put in the truth values for each of those letters. And then I'm going to just go left to right, make sure my parentheses are all good. The opposite of false makes this true. Then I have true and. Again, I have the opposite of false, which makes this true. Working inside the parentheses now. If both statements are true, true and true, the outcome is true. Remember, that's your conjunction. Conjunctions right here say that if both statements are true, the outcome is true. All right, then for your disjunction, it says if both statements are false, then the outcome is false. And that would be the only time it is false. So this is going to give you a true result. So the answer to this question is the statement is true. And once again, I'm just showing every step on here. Let me give you some little guidance from what I did. This is P is false, Q is true, R is false. Then I did the negation of false and I did the negation of false right here. Then we went with the conjunction of true and true to give me that true. And then lastly, we did this disjunction.